So hey there, little Sea Star S50. Do you want to take my job as an astro nerd? Yes, yes, yes. Of course. Well, let's just see about that. In the past few years, these so-called smart telescopes have invaded our skies. Little machines like the Sea Star S50 can find, track, focus, and photograph celestial wonders effortlessly, mocking the eight years I've spent mastering the art of astrophotography. But being an astro nerd, I'm not going down without a fight. This is a battle for the soul of astrophotography, where experience, patience, and the pursuit of true knowledge are pitted against the cheap allure of convenience. In this video, I'm committed to showing folks what they will lose when they trade in the thrill of astrophotography for the ease of automation. Yet, with AI and smart tech advancing at an alarming pace, I can feel the pressure mounting. My identity as an astro nerd is on the line. I'm going to be using a setup that is slightly more expensive than the $500 I spent on you. Is that okay? You're already cheating? All right, let's get this party started. Your days are numbered, astro nerd. I'm faster, smarter, and unstoppable. <laughs> So this is the Celestron Edge HD 8-inch telescope. So I have installed this Jew heater ring. So here we have a filter wheel. So this is the ZWO AM5 harmonic drive mount. And I also installed a 0.7 reducer, the ASI 5133 color camera. Blah, 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 blah. And this is the guide scope. So all right, little C Star S50, I'm done now setting up my professional astrophotography rig. So are you ready for this? It took you ages to set it up. All right, so the first target will be the Crescent Nebula in the Constellation Cygnus. Is that okay with you? I will be tracking and photographing that nebula within two minutes. All right, let's get ready to rumble. Initializing. <laughs> After dark, I connected wirelessly to the Seastar S50 using the Seastar app on my smartphone. I searched for the Crescent Nebula, better known to astro nerds as NGC 6888. After selecting the nebula, the Seastar swiftly slew to the object, performed automatic calibration and focusing routines, began capturing and stacking 10-second images immediately. The entire process from opening up the app to imaging took less than 5 minutes. Little Sea Star, tracking, focusing and imaging the Crescent Nebula within 5 minutes. That's truly impressive. Thank you, thank you. However, you kind of did break the golden astrophotography rule for astro nerds. What rule? Well, that is to first photo align your mount before you start to image an object. Photo alignment? What's that? You don't know what that is? Let me show you. Every astro nerd knows that polar aligning your mount is crucial for astrophotography because it helps your telescope track the stars correctly as the Earth rotates. Without polar alignment, stars will start to drift and become blurry in your photos. The ASI Air Plus I'm using on my Super Duper Astro Rig has a fancy polar alignment module so I can exactly pinpoint my telescope towards the North Celestial Pole within one arc minute of error. And that, my little sea star, is how polar alignment is done. You didn't even start taking images. <laughs> yeah, I didn't take any images yet. 
Now I can take much longer exposure images of deep space objects like the Crescent Nebula. And that decreases my signal to noise ratio. It allows me to capture much fainter details in that nebula. But I have an internal filter to boost my signal to noise ratio. Ah, you do have that internal filter, don't you? Well, let me get started. He didn't even take any pictures yet. Time to catch up. I quickly selected the Crescent Nebula in the ASI Airs virtual database and slewed the telescope to the target. At almost 1500 mm focal length, I initiated auto guiding to keep the stars round and tight, using a secondary camera and telescope to send corrections to the tracking mount. I then created an imaging plan to capture the Crescent Nebula with 300 second exposures, using HA and O3 narrowband filters to enhance the contrast and reveal fine details. After taking my first 5 minute sub in H-Alpha, I finally had time to rest. Just when I thought everything was working smoothly, I got star drills in one of my long exposure O3 narrowband pictures. Oh, guys, I finally figured out what was going on there. Um, I must have accidentally hit the guide scope because the guide scope was misaligned uh, in comparison to my main scope. So, total loser. Meanwhile, the Sea Star was experiencing its own issues. Its LS tracking without polar alignment was causing severe distortions at the edges of the picture. An issue well known to astro nerds as field rotation. Well, uh, I guess I had enough. Let's save this image. All right, little sea star, are you ready for the big reveal of the pictures? Let's go. Let's start with the picture you sent me on my smartphone. Let me show you that picture right here. Yeah, we can clearly see the Crescent Nebula, it's very nice. I also see that you included the object's name and the total exposure time, so that's really nice. You did a really good job. Congratulations. Thanks so much. I also downloaded the 16-bit FITS files from the C-Star's hard drive and used my AstroNerd power to create this final image. After stacking around 1000 photos C-Star captured that night, I have to admit, the picture turned out quite well. Are you ready to experience the full force of the Astro Nerd. Do I have a choice? All right, here we go. Three. Two. One. It's huge. That's a clear win. 1-0 for me, right? But you hardly captured any space around the target. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I used a long focal length telescope, so that's why you don't see a lot of space around the Crescent Nebula. And you paid 10 times more for your astrophotography setup? Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're right, you're right. Then I won points for ease of use and affordability. So it's 2-1. to one. Hey, but wait a minute! This hobby is called astrophotography, right? Not astro comfortably or astro affordability. Right then, but I want a rematch. You want another shootout, my astro friend? You're on. All right, C Star S50, second imaging night. Are you ready for this? I'm always ready. I don't need any sleep like you do. We're going to image the Pac Man Nebula in the constellation Cassiopeia. All right with you? Yes. But I want to be on the rooftop again. What? You want to be on the rooftop again? I find your view on this balcony rather limited. You find my balcony view rather limited? Well, look at all those trees. And your view towards the west is completely blocked. Well, alright then, I'll, I'll push you on the rooftop. Okay. Shutting down. Okay, here we go. I have to
to admit, carrying that little sea star to the rooftop is much easier than dragging my main astro rig, which often gets stuck on my balcony without a westward view. Much better. Thank you. Second night started much like the first night with the Sea Stars 50 imaging the Pac Man Nebula within 5 minutes. So, guys, I just spent half an hour trying to focus this telescope on the stars, and then I just realized I forgot to take the lens cap off. Rookie mistake! Loser! just lost half an hour and I had to refocus my telescope while the Sea Star S50 was already busy imaging the Pac-Man Nebula. Feeling the pressure, I scrambled to get my expensive astro rig up and running as fast as humanly possible. Finally, some time to truly enjoy the night sky. As I looked at sickness high in the sky, I couldn't resist and grabbed my vlog camera, snapped 25 raw images, edited out the light pollution and captured this shot of the sickness clouds and the Milky Way. True astro nerds wake up with only one thing on their mind, taking flats. These crucial shots help to calibrate out vignetting, dust and optical issues that sneak into long exposure space images. Afterward, hours are spent in software like PixInsight to select, stack and process individual photos into the perfect final image. For this session, I used my ASI 2600MC Pro camera with its bigger 26 megapixel APS-C size sensor to capture the stunning Pac-Man Nebula. But it took me hours in pics inside to stack the photos when using local normalization. You might also wonder how the Sea Star achieves such a similar field of view compared to my huge telescope. Well, it uses a much smaller camera sensor that captures a much smaller part of the night sky which compensates for the difference. However, my setup delivers five times the image scale of the Sea Star, making the poor astronomical seeing conditions here in the Netherlands my only true enemy. So right my little astro friend, second picture reveal, are you ready for this? Here we go again. Let's start with the picture you sent me on my smartphone again. So you sent me this picture of the Pac-Man Nebula and I have to say on my smartphone it looks pretty decent. Truth be told, if I zoom in here on my PC screen and I look at that picture, you did have some trouble tracking the stars because I see a little bit of star trailing here, some elongated stars. And also when I look at the Nebula, it is slightly, slightly out of focus. So. I would say not the very best picture you ever took, but still for a $500 smart telescope, pretty decent picture of the Pac-Man Nebula. Thanks, I guess. Using approximately four hours of 16-bit FITS files gathered over several sessions from the Sea Star's internal drive, I was able to create this image of the Pac-Man Nebula. The stars are somewhat rounder, but the nebula remains slightly blurry. Are you ready to experience the full force of the Astro Nerd once again? Oh no, not again. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. It's huge again. How long did it take you to process this image? 
it took me about four hours to stack the pictures and about two hours to process them. Do you really think people have time for that? <laughs> yeah, well, I guess astrophotography is not for everyone. So you win in the best picture category, but I come out on top in affordability and ease of use, right? <laughs> okay, my little astro friend, I'm starting to like you more and more. I will bring you on my future astrophotography trips. As long as you put me on the roof. Thank you.